I'm Dr. Debbie Tomac. I'm the Associate Medical Director for the Center for Child and Community, and I'm really honored to be able to talk to you about what we're doing at Children's um, and really have appreciated our partnership with the um, Douglas County Health Department. Um, I feel like we are um, now uh, truly partners in the field, uh, and I haven't always said that, as you know. Um, so real thankful that, that you exist and that you push us to do what is the right thing in our community. So thanks for this opportunity. All right, let me see if I can run this. Um, Children's has a strategic plan just like all other hospitals, and we are on it. Um, and that's a big step in the forward movement because we haven't always been there. Um, that community now is a part of health, and uh, our um, our strategic plan is showing that. So right now it says engage the community. Um, the next time uh, in 2020, it's going to say partner with the community. Okay, so we're we're moving down that continuum of care of of you know meeting and greeting, and now trying to actually do the work together. Um, putting children's in the community health part. This has not been, as we've said before, um, a, a high priority in our organization, but now has becoming, um, with the creation of our center, this Center for Child and Community, and this is actually our mission and goal um, for the center, not the Children's Hospital goal, but it's really to empower communities, and I know empower is not that uh, uh, word we should be using, so we may have to wordsmith a little bit uh, to really communicate well, but. To, do, to really value and the support of health and safety and well-being of every child, okay? not just the children that come to our place. And then really to coordinate and build a community platform that addresses the whole child, not just the, um, the perhaps the acute reason why they have come to see us. Um, collaborative partnerships. This is where um, our, our work is really um, getting traction within the uh, children's community. Uh, um, we uh, sometimes in health look at each other as competitors, and so we have to stop doing that, all right? Uh, because we are not going to be able to solve um, hunger, transportation issues, housing issues, the things that really um, help determine people's health without having a partnership with those who are reaching the, the folks in need. And so that, that means that we have to uh, put aside our um, perhaps competitive natures in some, in some ways and to really use that to work together. And so uh, I, I do not have that impressive a list of partnerships, okay? So I'm, I'm, I have a goal, okay? I am going to get a bigger list of those partners. Um, uh, mostly because we don't, so far we've been so busy doing the work that we haven't done a very good job documenting our work and collecting that kind of data points um, because, first of all, uh, there's, we're a lean and mean group, okay? <laughs> you're, seeing, you're seeing the Omaha component of, of this, um, but uh, we recognize that in order to show the difference, just like what you've seen in your presentation from Methodist, that we need to do a better job of showing what we're doing so that way we can be held accountable for doing more. So we're really working on these um, uh, non-traditional partners um, trying to build some momentum and traction. Uh, this is our uh, logo list of partners. There are many uh, that stand behind, but these are the ones that are really the rich ones. Um, and, and we're, uh, like I said, Douglas County Health Department right over there in that corner, as well as Lincoln Lancaster Health Department. Because our center is focused and housed in Lincoln, we have really a rich relationship with um, that um, community and are building off really adding that child health component to most of what happens in the Lincoln community. I'm not here to talk about that, but you need to know that that's happening as well. Okay, we're raising the bar in community health. <coughs> Last time um, I looked at what I told you, so I'm going to pick up the, the ball from there. Um, we promised that we would go to the community to talk to, about our priorities, um, and so we did. We went and partnered with Live Well. We went to and participated in that Change Maker Summit. We listened to the community and, and heard from them their highest four priorities. And so uh, uh, we, we thought, okay, that's very good and interesting. Um, you know, how can we really narrow our focus instead of this very broad 11 topic priority list, which is what we got back from our PRC child health needs assessment, how can we really focus that into things that um, 
you know, categories that we can go deeper in uh, rather than just trying to um, buckshot uh, across uh, all those priorities. So we took this back to our internal uh, group. We have now an advocacy group we've created since we last met um, of internal folks, again, passionate about um, community health, already doing advocacy in the community. And we asked them, where do you think we should be? And, and they, they were not at the summit. They did not know what the community said. Um, and we presented all the material to them. And they also picked those top four. So we know we're in the right zone, the access to care, mental behavioral health, nutrition, physical activity, and uh, obesity treatment and prevention, and sexual health. So the impact areas that we have at this point are working it within the early childhood systems. Um, we're just beginning to tap some of that potential in Omaha, but within the Lincoln um, community, uh, we are the health component there. Um, in Omaha, I think we have uh, some more work to do because there's lots of people doing lots of things. We've started partnering with MOAC uh, and, and looking at their uh, uh, Raise, Raise Me to Read uh, program. And, and so we have some uh, work there that we're um, beginning to, to do um, outside of just the traditional boundaries of health. Um, clinic to community integration, which is a lot of where I spend my um, boots on the ground, is really taking um, programs like the Vision Mobile, um, Vision Screening, out into the community where we know that um, there is access um, issues. And so we're, we're beginning to do those kind of um, reach outs from um, our clinical teams actually into the community um, in, in pediatrics as well. One of the last efforts that we're just beginning to start is to take our pulmonology team um, and to, to develop some mass screening asthma um, activities and partnering in North Omaha with the Empowerment Network as well as um, with Charles Drew to be able to um, not only identify those people but really get them into care and to, to control their chronic disease. School health and wellness, um, we're continuing to do focus in that area um, with education mostly for and supporting of the school nurses in uh, especially Omaha Public Schools and Westside Schools. Um, we recognize that they have a, a, a administrative task for doing screening, but they also are the biggest triagers of where children spend most of their time in the day. And so we need to be able to help them, help their students um, to, uh, to have good health so that they can learn and so that their um, life trajectory can be as full as it can be. Obesity prevention strategies, um, we, we lead that um, along with some others in the community to really focus on um, health and wellness um, with programming like Go Knapsack, which uh, uh, raises the bar for uh, young children in our community in daycares to actually have high standards of physical activity and um, uh, healthy food and nutrition. We're part of that Step Up to Quality program. Uh, we have component of that that is just our daily work. And then uh, working hard to create this data. And that's a hard thing in children. Uh, at this point, we still are struggling with looking at the data in our community through a child lens. Um, and yet, we're starting to just get a little bit of a focus with some of the um, electronic health record information through children's that we'd like to um, be able to um, partner with others in our community to gather their child health data so that we can get more of a complete picture of what it really looks like um, in our community so we address those things that are um, uh, you know, clear for all. So a lot of time on this slide, but this is kind of the nuts and bolts. Um, I, I am not, um, uh, unlike the Methodist program, I am not going to talk about all of our stuff. We have way too many things. It, it wouldn't, I wouldn't do justice to them, but I gave you a handout that you can read about um, all of our implementation strategic plan that talks about those four areas, all the mental health work we're doing, all of that. Um, and it really is truly, and I say this um, with full confidence, we have really stretched out of our comfort zone, <laughs> even though we still are in our wheelhouse because that's what we know how to do. But we're out of our comfort zone doing those things that we really um, uh, are not just the traditional uh, healthcare of the day kind of pattern. So I'm real proud of that. And, and I wouldn't say that if I really didn't believe it, okay? <laughs> okay, so systems is what we're about. We're doing education 
um, with telementoring. So we're using telehealth in, in a way that educates not only um, uh, primary care providers in our community, but outside of our community, sharing our expertise across a Zoom uh, platform that uh, allows uh, folks to continue their, their medical education, their nursing education now, um, and that's through a project called um, Project Echo. Uh, we have, uh, flip to this, um, we are now the recipient of uh, part of the wellness, school wellness uh, program, um, funding from uh, the Nebraska Department of Education, and we are focused on the chronic disease part of this. And so we've been asked to go uh, assist nine rural uh, districts to help the school nursing team, the provider care team, and the public health all merge together to work um, to help the children in their communities who have chronic diseases like asthma, diabetes, seizures, to thrive. And, and so we have a staff member, uh, Kim McClintock, who's, who, whose job it is to be a school nurse coordinator. Again, early childhood health, um, it, we have a pilot now in Lincoln, Nebraska, uh, that says uh, we are bringing a, a, a Connecticut children's program, national program of Help Me Grow. And it's similar to the um, Aunt Bertha uh, uh, project that you've heard before, where it really uh, it, um, is that identification of resources that are in the community that deal with a, a wide range of health issues, which is transportation as well as food, um, housing, um, as well as health care, and getting that information available and in the hands of the family and the community, as well as the health providers who need it, and then circling back to keep, keep that continuous improvement. Um, we're piloting it in Lincoln and then would like to um, take it across the state. So the name of it, bringing it's help me grow. It's help me grow. And it'll be here, I'll flip to the next thing. So this is the model. Help Me Grow Nebraska, and it has a centralized point of access for all that information, um, similar to our, our 211, um, and, and yet um, enriched and a little more um, uh, vibrant um, for this specific uh, group of, of um, services, which is the early childhood. We, ha we have um, given out grants for childhood obesity. We continue to do that because we recognize that Sometimes you need startup money to figure out how to do uh, what you need to do in the community. And these, um, so we've continued to do that um, and uh, will continue in, in this in the future. There's the Project ECHO, uh, which is that uh, telementoring process. Okay, then I've talked already a little bit about the um, uh, clinic to community piece. We are. Uh, continuing to, to uh, uh, thrive in that way. Uh, what else did I want to say here? The, um, the target population for the vision piece are the Title I schools in OPS. And so we partner with the health services coordinator at OPS and review the list of schools every year and, and then the capacity of, of um, the school the school nurse and the, and the principal, and if they've been seen before by our program, and decide if they're on, on our screening list. All the children still get screened for those mandatory screenings, but it's just not done by our team um, across the way. Uh, so, so we're continuing to do that. Just trying to think. And this is our, um, and I've given you all a little card. This is our web page, so if you want to see more about um, our uh, community, the pediatric uh, community health needs assessment, um, our uh, community um, benefit report. Uh, it's all on this uh, slide. So you go to uh, www.childrens.org, advocacy, click on the community advocacy, and they're all posted there for everybody to see. Okay. Um, here is our part of the community benefit discussion. So th this is actually the um, 2017 numbers. Our report is still being printed and finalized um, for 2018, um, but it will be done probably in the next two weeks. I know some of the numbers, so I can speak to them, but I can't, I can't publicize them yet. 
So um, our total community benefit was $115 million uh, to the community. And in that picture, the brought, we, we split it. And that's, that's the tricky part with you can, you can uh, have all the components of the 990 form, that financial form, and you can mush them however you want to to describe this. And how we have uh, uh, de decided to do that is we have a broader community health part which includes those things underneath that category, um, uh, cash, subsidized health care, health professions, education, which is really the major part of that bulk of money. So why it's so high is really that health professions. We educate nearly everybody about children and health in our region. Okay, we have, um, we had about uh, 20, oh, no, the region, we cross um, Pottawatomie County, a lot of uh, southwest Iowa is us as well, even into um, some South Dakota, tips of South Dakota, and, and kind of halfway between Kansas City and Omaha is, is kind of our boundary for a region. So you already, and that's what I'm, that's what I'm going to go to, I guess hospitals, maybe there's some money in the times for the Yeah, well, Kansas City, Chile, and then, um, yeah, Des Moines, Iowa City, mm -hmm. yeah, and then um, Denver on the other side. So uh, uncompensated care, because um, for, for the Medicaid expansion, that doesn't directly affect children because they already are part of Medicaid, but the, the children who age out of Medicaid proper, they would be um, potentially eligible for that, as well as those families, you know, the parents of the children. And so that's where we're going to see some hopeful, um, hopeful um, increase in, in utilization by the children. Because if the parents have insurance and they're taking care of health, then I, I am very hopeful that we'll see an increase and in upswing of, of Medicaid recipients for those children who maybe haven't had that opportunity before. That's the only way it's really going to affect our pie at this point. Um, uncompensated care uh, is is there, and that ours is very large, as you as you can compare here. I have I have a pie too. So so our uncompensated care looks like that. Okay, that's what happens when you have Medicaid as a, a big payer, um, is that you get uh, some of that as well as as um, and then we have a little piece of community programs and services. And, and that's because these other numbers are so big, okay? <laughs> it ends up, it's a lot of money, uh, for, uh, but, but it's, um, it gets overwhelmed by the, um, the, the different payer uh, mix that we have. Okay, what else to tell you about this? The 2018 numbers, I'm gonna go back, maybe, if I can. I'll just talk to this. The 2018 numbers, um, the total community benefit ends up being $318 million. So it's gone up 2.5 uh, uh, times what it was in 2017. So a lot more community benefit that we're seeing because, and, and honestly, we haven't changed how we're collecting that information yet. We need to do that. We need to do a better job of documenting what's community benefit. The, the, it's exactly the same collection method, so we know that it's really just an increase in, in that uncompensated care um, and broader community health um, uh, piece. The broader community health um, segment, which includes that subsidized health care, is three times greater than it was in 2017. Um, uh, uncompensated care is two times what it was over 2017, and the community programs is just about 40% more. So more, more, more um, in, in all of those buckets. Um, and so I just wanted to leave you with the last, uh, is that our goal is really to improve the life of every child. And in order to do that, we have to, to in our community, not just take care of those folks who make it to our door and, and to really internalize within our organization that the idea of populations and community outside of our doors. And, and that is just beginning to happen. Um, I feel uh, as very candidly in our in our um, in our workplace. Open for any questions. What's the 